This was back in 2021, the first time where we had that 7-8, 9-10 play-in. Warriors taking on the Lakers. It was an incredible game, up and back the entire way. Lakers getting the better of it. And this does matter, because I look back at the last three years that we've done this, a 10 seed has never made it to the final eight. So we've had some nines that have made it, but a 10 seed hasn't. And so we could have Lakers Warriors. This could be a preview if the Kings keep winning and the Pelicans keep winning and the Warriors trying their best. They're trying to get the nine while the Lakers are trying to even get out of it and get up to the eight. So tonight, so much on the line and all season long, there's been a cue next to LeBron and Anthony Davis before each and every game, a questionable tag. And so for some clarity on whether they're playing and the message to the rest of the squad, we bring in my main man, Chris Haynes. Chris, what are you hearing from the Lakers? Adam, thank you, brother. Well, it's for the Lakers, LeBron James. I'm told that the expectation is that he will be available to play tonight against the Golden State Warriors. We know he suffered an illness, wasn't able to play in, against Minnesota. I was told he's been receiving treatment around the clock, and he's gradually getting better. And so the plan is for him to be in the lineup. Now for Anthony Davis, we know he suffered another eye injury. It's about the second time he had that left eye hit on in the past week so you know he it's been a little bit different 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 and difficult for him i should say he's also been receiving treatment around the clock i'm told he's also seen some eye specialists and he's trying to do everything he can to make himself available for tonight but i am told that he will go through a pre-game walkthrough and see how he feels before determining if he's available to play tonight and one more thing i know people have been talking about uh, goggles, throwing out Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and all that stuff. I was told that if Anthony Davis does indeed play, that there will be no goggles on site. So uh, that's the good, that's the somewhat of good news, I guess, for people who are, you know, are attire um, geniuses like yourself, Adam. Uh, but as far as the Lakers are concerned, they think they're in pretty good shape. And I was told that LeBron James and AD has stressed to this team within the locker room, tell them the importance of getting to that seventh seed or maybe even that eighth seed. They want to be in a situation where they get one victory and they move into the playoffs. They don't want to fall to ninth or tenth. So back to you, my guy. Chris, thank you so much. It will undoubtedly be a Spectacle. I caught what you said there. Nice, nice. <laughs> you guys got one? <laughs> Let me bring it into focus. Um, all right, so this is this is very big. As you're talking, seven to eight, very different than nine or ten with Anthony Davis battling through this. Um, I, I want to show this just because of the names. LeBron versus Steph. Since LeBron has gotten to the Lakers, it has been a pretty even matchup, and it also spotlights this part of LeBron's career where he suddenly became a three-point shooter. I was not expecting to see him having a better three-point That's crazy. That's a Steph. crazy stat. Jamal, you speak on that, and then Candace can bring some perspective. It's just crazy because Steph is the best shooter ever, like known to man, so you wouldn't think that LeBron actually has a higher percentage. Kudos to LeBron for actually, you know, upping his three-point percentage, which is crazy. It's almost 40%. And I think that's why his scoring has been easier because the, the wear and tear is less. But I was shocked when I saw that. I listen, if you're going to give LeBron something, you're going to try to pray that he takes a game full of threes. threes. Right. And this oh. year he's hit nine, ten threes from beyond the arc, and he's doing it with patience. Because, listen, if you let this man get downhill, I don't care, 21 years in the league, he still is one of the best that there ever has been um, at getting to the paint. And so I think in the clutch, I love that he's not settling for the three, even though he's shooting 40% almost from beyond the arc in the clutch. He is getting downhill and getting to the rim, and I think that's why the Lakers are doing so well pulling out games like this. But listen, there's not going to be many more Steph versus LeBron no. games. And I think as fans, we have to appreciate it and understand that they have literally carried this league on their back in this matchup and what they've done and the dominance that they had. So, I mean, I, I, regular season game or not, play in, whatever, I hope everybody tunes in because – this is greatness. I can't remember the last time this matchup has truly disappointed. It does seem to bring the best out of each other. I mean, it's going to bring the best out of each other, but <clears throat> when it comes to mental preparation and focus, I, I like Golden State. Lakers have been up and down all year. Now they're stressing the importance of getting to the seventh or the eighth spot. You know, Golden State has been up and down. When it comes to that mental focus, I think I have to trust uh, Clay, uh, Draymond, and those guys. The key factor 
especially if they play in the playing game, it's going to be Clay Thompson. Now, you know, everybody's counting them out, but all it takes is one game. And, Six you know, threes again on Sunday. And guess what? And if I got to rely on somebody for one game, I'm going to rely on Clay Thompson. Before I, I thought you were going to say Anthony Davis, because I thought in this No, I, 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 listen, I've, I've, I've been on him a lot. He's playing well. You know, the Lakers, others have to step up. They really got to step up. Reeves, Austin Reeves, the Angelo, Angelo, Russells, yeah. Angelo has been playing good. You know, uh, Hachi Moore, you know, when he came in last year, you know, everybody was high on him. I really have to change whatever. Yep. Yeah, so, you know, those guys really have to step up. Brown's going to do what he does. AD's going to do what he does. But the others need to step up. And I'm looking at Mr. Reeves. I was there for the, uh, what was that tournament in Vegas? The in-season tournament. The in-season tournament. Mr. Reeves, he had, you know, 29 points in that final game. He's going to have to have two or three of those if the Lakers want to, you know, move forward. You know what's so interesting to me is I think the Warriors are in a great spot because defensively they're playing a lot better. Offensively, the others are playing a lot better, and Steph is struggling. And you know what Steph's going to do um, in the playoffs. You know that Wake he's up. not – yeah, he's, he's, he is not one that you're going to have to worry about coming to play. I mean, he put up 50 against Sacramento Kings in a, in a decisive game, and so – you look at that, I think that that's where you find positivity is that the others are figuring their way out. Yeah. Steph is struggling at this point, but he's played well against the Lakers. He's averaging 36 against the Lakers this season. Jeez. It's crazy because when they played, I believe it was in the playoffs, the Lakers did something that no team has done in a while is turn Steph back into a point guard. Mm. But the difference is now the others are playing com uh, better. Kaminga's a, a clear cut number two option, which right. frees Clay to be the number three guy. Now he gets easier shots. Yep. Their offense is rolling a lot more. And Steph, to her point, is absolutely – we know he's going to do it in the playoffs, but the others have confidence now. So if they make him try to be a point guard again, they may pay for it. I'll have the Warriors if they play. They, uh, they've gotten a lot out of this Jackson Davis kid down yes. low. Pajemski has been really good. Let's take a look at the upcoming schedules for both teams because tonight is imperative, but there, of course, are some other games as well. Warriors and Lakers. Lakers only have three games remaining tonight against the Warriors, Friday against the Grizzlies. You have to think that one is very winnable. And Sunday at the Pelicans could also have some implications. Warriors, four games left. Blazers and Jazz. Jazz are on a losing streak of their own, so they share that opponent in the Pelicans as well. But tonight, Shaq, has your three favorite words. What are they? Pin love. I, mean, I love food. Oh, my God. Play in, play in implications. <laughs> you look know, like pin. Shaq whispered to say? me. He goes, yeah. I've always wanted to say play, play in implications on TV. What does that say, Kevin? He couldn't get out at first. It play in, but you said plug. No, no, you said plug. Said, I, didn't know I figured you'd know what no, it was. I was like, no, he said, plug in. Shaq was over there sounding yeah. it out. I asked him before he said <laughs> it. Play in implications. He was playing. So, just... Uh, we heard Chris, just to wrap this up, we have like 25 seconds left. Chris said AD and LeBron went to everybody and said, we need to win this game. Do you remember a time where you looked at the team and was like, it wasn't a playoff game, but it was like must win regular season? Yeah, all the time, uh, especially playing against the Spurs and the Sacramento Kings, even, you know, the Utah, because Utah. So Jazz like just a rivalry yeah, game. Yeah, a rivalry game, but you know, I've never been in this position to where we're not almost in the playoffs, but. You know, they, I, me personally, I think you never been in this position. No, of course never. not. Where never. Where you were never one time where you almost didn't make the playoffs. Play for Orlando. No. I just watched your documentary no. with Orlando. <laughs> no, you forget that he remembers what he wants. The there was never year. a time where you were fighting for an eight seed. No, oh, never dot com. <laughs> never. Never dot no. com. <laughs> Hell to the mouth. No. With the dad jokes. Yes. <laughs> oh, <George. laughs> The size of that box under Adam. You know, it's something yeah, that yeah, I box look like yeah, all yeah. the time. What's that box look like? Little feet, oh. man. Little feet. Man. Short leg, man. <laughs> you know, it's just not fair sitting next to one of the biggest humans of all time. But oh, hey, my goodness. Look at that box. The kicks are fire, though. Let's go ahead. Get like out that. of my shot. I need to <laughs> Put some lotion on those ankles. Man, they're they not ashy. <laughs> See, you know, it doesn't.